What's up guys, I'm James, and welcome back to the Great Gambino channel. Today we are going to take a look at my Omega Seamaster Diver 300. Now I wanna point out that I did purchase this wash through Joma Shop. I've purchased many pieces from them over the years, but never one this expensive. After doing a lot of research and trying the piece on at multiple authorized dealers, I did the math and decided the amount of money that I would save by going through Joma was worth it. Keep in mind that if you do choose to go the same route, you will not receive a manufacturer's warranty and your repairs will be done through Joma Shop. Or you can pay out of pocket to have Omega service your piece. If something does go Wrong, I will end up biting the bullet and paying the Omega fees. Either way, I do not believe the costs of repairs will exceed the amount I saved, so it's a risk I'm willing to take. With that out of the way, I will say Joma Shop has done a great job packing this item. Once you remove the first cardboard box, you will have to unravel this paper mesh, followed by plenty of tissue paper, only to reveal a secondary cardboard box that once opened will finally expose the main Omega packaging. With this first main box, there is not much to show, but I feel it is important to talk about every little detail of this experience. In front of us, we have a thick basic white box with a silver printed Omega logo on the top. I will say that due to the contents inside, it is pretty heavy. Removing the top lid, we are immediately treated with a prime presentation as everything is neatly compartmentalized. We will set the main box off to the side and take a quick look at some of the accessories. We have a very thick operating instruction manual, as well as a leather holder that stores your master chronometer, pictogram, and warranty card. Because of what I stated earlier in the video, the warranty card was not included with this purchase. The holster itself is very nice and stamped with the company logo. Flipping open this beautiful, solid, beechwood colored watch case continues this premium experience. We have a high gloss finish on the wood that feels smooth to the touch. On the inside, there's a luxurious padded leather with the Omega logo branded across the back. The hinges are high polished and glide open and closed. Taking a closer look at the branded button, it has a satisfying click while operating. The base leather flips open to reveal the rest of the accessories. We have an Omega tag, a warranty tag from Joma Shop that I removed earlier, a thick leather branded pillow for resting the piece, a microfiber card for cleaning, and a microfiber bag that can be used to store extra links. Overall, the initial package presentation is very impressive by Omega. Most of their modern pieces go all out when it comes to the box, and it definitely feels like a five-star experience. But let's go ahead and remove the plastics. It was a long decision process that led me to choose the Seamaster 300. I had looked at many different pieces such as the Tudor Black Bay, the Grand Seiko Snowflake, and even the Omega Speedmaster Professional. After seeing and loving all of these pieces in person, it was the Seamaster that I immediately connected with the most. Due to my 6.75 inch wrist, I went back and forth on my final decision, but we will talk more on that subject later in the video. The first Omega Seamaster 300 was the CK2913, released in 1957. There were many different versions with various changes and advancements through the years, but it was in 1995 that it was thrown into the spotlight when Pierce Brosnan sported the newly redesigned Omega Seamaster 254180 in James Bond Goldeneye. The watch featured a blue bezel with the famous wave dial and skeletonized hands very similar to what we see here. The model we are looking at now was first shown at Basel World in 2018. It sparked a lot of excitement with the reintroduction of the wave dial. The piece was shown in blue, gray, and black. Then in 2019, they released one with a white dial. Real quick, I'll give you some measurements. We have a width of 42 millimeters. Lug to lug is 50 millimeters. If you want to change out the band, it's 20 millimeters, and we have a case thickness of 13.56 millimeters. The crown is stamped with the Omega symbol, and when screwed down, this piece offers 300 meters or 1,000 feet of water resistance. The winding action is extremely smooth and ultra quiet. So quiet, in fact, that I had trouble picking up the sound with my microphone, but for the sake of continuity, let's see if we can hear what that winding function sounds like. This bezel is very impressive with its scalped edging flickering the lights off of its brushed surfaces. The bezel insert is ceramic with white enamel markings that should not fade over time. One of the things I have noticed while wearing this is that when you are out in bright light, you can actually see some depth to the enamel numerals as light bends into the surface creating a cool effect. There's a pip at 12 o'clock, and while operating, it's probably one of the cleanest bezel actions out of any watch I've ever owned. It's easy to turn, has a pleasant sound, and lines up perfect with absolutely zero back play. Let's go ahead and check that out.
Omega used a dome piece of scratch resistant sapphire crystal with anti reflective treatment on both sides of the glass. Keep in mind that I have extra studio lights turned on for this review because I really wanted the details to pop, but I can tell you that this is some of the best AR I've ever witnessed in person. If you look at the bezel, you can notice how much light is reflecting with almost none of it creating the same reflection on the actual glass. There are many times where if you are out in daylight, you will look down and feel like the glass has simply disappeared. Getting in close on the dial, you can see the depth of those thick maxi applied indices that are rhodium plated along with the skeleton hands. We have a date window at the 6 o'clock, which is a change from the original version's 3 o'clock placement. Another change from previous versions is that this time around, the dial is made of polished ceramic and features laser engraved waves. The wave cuts themselves have an almost charcoal gray tone, which contrasts nicely with the rest of the dial. One of the things I love about this dial is that, depending on the light reflection, it can either look a solid jet black or an almost metallic silver color. It is one of the things that will have you gazing at the watch throughout the day while on your wrist. Flipping around back, we can see that 8800 movement that is shown off through a sapphire crystal display window, which is a first for the 300 series. This movement is a coaxial master chronometer, which is officially certified by Meta's. It beats at 25,200 vibrations per hour, and it has a 55 hour power reserve. This 35 joule movement is beautifully decorated. The rotor and bridges are rhodium plated and feature Geneva waves. And having this display case back is definitely another part that makes the watch fun to look at. You can see in this shot, the lugs have a sliver of brushing on the top that twists off into a high polished center portion that tapers out. Then on the side, we have a very clean horizontal brush pattern. One of the things I like is that the center portion is thin, creating the illusion that the watch is not as thick as its measurement. In addition, the lugs are curved immediately downward to fit comfortably on the wrist. Omega has chosen to keep the helium released in this version, and many people are not happy about this feature, but I personally like it as I feel it is iconic to the Seamaster. All of the links and end links are solid and the overall band has a classic but classy vibe. You can actually see the brush pattern in this shot. It is very impressive and those portions contrast well with the polish sections. There are screw down pins on each side of the links. I will say that sizing was a little challenging as some of the pins were hard to remove. The brushing is equally excellent on the branded clasp and pressing the double push button release will reveal the thick high quality milled parts. A dive extension is included but more importantly we have the inclusion of a quick release glide lock for micro adjustments on the fly. Overall, I would say the band and clasp are outstanding, but let's go ahead and check out the loom. We have green superluminova on the minute hand along with the pip and blue superluminova on the indices as well as the hour hand creating an interesting combination common with Omega. In person, it looks very clean with an even tone. I will say that at this price range, I expected the loom to be a little brighter longer into the night, but with that said, you will not have a problem reading the time in the dark if you pre-loom it. Here's a side by side shot next to an American quarter to give you a better representation of the scale. Size is one of the areas I feel like a lot of people are held up on this piece. The current diver size that pleases most is around 40 millimeters. With this watch being 42 millimeters, many would consider it to be too large. In the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty average size piece. I feel as watch collectors, we can be a little hard on ourselves with our size choices. One of the things I have decided as a watch collector is that I do not want to limit myself on what I can own based on my own wrist. There are many pieces that are very iconic, and I feel that if you really love a piece, you should be able to own it, wear it, and have it as part of your collection. I don't know if it translates on this video, but in person, it doesn't protrude out past my 6.75 inch wrist. When you wear pieces of a certain size, it is amazing how quickly you get used to it, and this no longer feels like a large watch. I love the details on this piece, and I would not want to shrink them down. But let's go ahead and cut to the outdoor shot so I can show you that natural light reflection.
All right, that's going to wrap up this review of the Omega Seamaster 300. And if you have made it this far in the video, I want you to know how much I really do appreciate you sticking around until the end. So thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next one.